Hi everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an Acer laptop. This is an Acer Predator Helos Neo 16. The exact model is an N22Q22. And in this video, I'm going to go cover step by step how you can open it up and how you can clean up the fan system, the heat sink, and repaste your CPU, GPU on your laptop. If yours is running really hot, it sounds like a jet engine and the temperature is all over the place, then you can open it up and repaste. Maybe it's clogged up with a lot of dust, it, and lots of time passed by because this is just a vacuum cleaner pretty much. And this is not a benchmark test or anything like that. I'm going to show you the thermal paste that I use, I prefer to use because, and the reason why, and um, because I get lots of comments, people like I use the different type of pads, they will last longer, this and that. I'll let you know why in a second. Just by remember by replacing your thermal paste and stuff, nothing's gonna change on the system. Everything, if your files, everything else, they're gonna be the same way that you left it before. So no worries about losing data or anything like that. So first thing first, what you want to do, you want to power off the laptop completely and you want to flip it upside down. Once you have it upside down, you're going to go over the tools that I'll be using. All the tools will be linked in the video description in case you want to purchase your tool number one, a very important one. A good screwdriver is a must because how many times I heard people say that my screwdriver is not working, I damaged the screw heads, stuff like that. Invest on a good screwdriver. I purchased myself this iFixit screwdriver set. The basic set, as they have all the bits, exact bits that you need for your uh, electronics. So I'll be using a Phillips number one. If you get a uh, opening tool for the, if you get the Pro set, that will give you opening tool stuff like that. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. You need a plastic spatula, curved straight tweezers, and a used or new toothbrush. Preferably new toothbrush. You will need a one sheet or two sheet of the workshop towel. The reason for workshop towel is because I do not recommend use the microfiber. The reason is for the next one, isopropolic or isopropolic 98% plus, not 70 or not anything lower than 98. Because once you put an alcohol on the top of these uh, papers, and you try to clean the motherboard, this will rip apart and will prevent the damage on the board. So that's why I say use this one. If you use a microfiber, you can damage the tiny capacitors on the board. All right. With these two on hand, you will need a good thermal paste. I will recommend you to use the Thermal Grizzly Extreme. These are really good thermal paste. And the reason is why I say to use this one. Don't use anything else. Don't use any other one. You can use any paste you want, obviously. But this is the best one for, for me, for my client. The reason is, even if you put a higher grade uh, thermal pads and stuff like that, thermal paste, you eventually has to, you have to open it up. You have to clean the system once every year, year and a half. And this one will last you perfectly fine more than a two years on your laptop, even on extreme uses. So use this one if you want. You can, or if you can go Arctic MX4, MX6. That's fine too. All right, so let's go ahead and remove all the screws on the bottom cover. You're starting from one corner, remove all of them. All the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching them. Keep them all in one single pile. Also, if you guys find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. Appreciate that. All right, now that we removed all the screws in here, you wanna grab the opening tool, the guitar pick, and you're gonna start from the front end of the laptop, always, usually any laptop you start, you start from the front. You wanna take the guitar pick between the palm rest and the front end. The reason is in the front, because we know there is no electronic almost in here, there's battery and the speaker, so we're gonna twist it like this, and you're gonna hear big click sound as the covers are coming loose, the clips, to the front end, Work yourself, I'm sticking about two or three millimeter in of the guitar pick. I'm not sticking the whole thing in, just the tip, if you know what I mean. All right, and go to the side. Do the same thing on the side towards the almost corner back. And once you did all those, the side and the front, 
you want to wiggle it around and it will eventually come out. It will snap the backside out. So this is the dust mesh in here. You can take it outside, blow some air and clean the dust mesh in here. Do that. This one is pretty clean. It's really new, almost has one or two months use for demo. So first thing first, we're gonna disconnect the battery. The battery has no screws, it's loosened up in here. So just grab it, bring it back, remove the gaffer's tape, pull the jack equally backward, put your fingers at the side, or not in here, on the jack, and with a force, bring them straight backward. Put the battery to one side. Now we have the heat sink that goes over here, PCH chip right over here. I see there's no cable, anything like that in here. I see this cable for the LCD comes down underneath and comes over under the gaffer's tape and goes right in here. So we're gonna remove this gaffer's tape in here so we can expose this cable for the LCD. You see right here. To remove this flex cable for the LCD, you wanna use your nails at this lever uh, hinge right in here or you just use a spatula and just 90 degree upward. And then you just want to slide it back. And there you have it loosened up. These fan cables are really fragile. There's a little gaffer's tape on them. I don't like to put gaffer's tapes over these connectors in here because I've seen so many over my years, over 20 years working. These gaffer's tapes, they come really dry and they get stuck to the, to the fan. They will stop the fan. They get plugged inside there. So just remove this ones. Trust me, these jacks are not going anywhere. So, uh, try to pull this uh, jack backward gently on the white section. Just wiggle it around a little bit and pull it back. Be careful with the cables. Those are really fragile. So trying to put it back very gently. There we go. Just pull it straight backward from the jack. Bring it back straight like that. If you pull on the cable, you can damage the cable uh, cables. Once you've done that, now we're going to remove a few screws. Uh, let's remove two screws for the fan on each side. One there and one right in here. Grab the fan, bring it up, clean it with a toothbrush and blow some air. If you just want to do fan cleaning, uh, do it without removing the heat sink. This is how you do it. Just remove the fans. You don't need to then remove this flex cable if you just want to clean the fan system. Bring it up. This one has a gaffer's tape. So rip it up. There we have it. Now, if you want to go inside the paste and remove the pads and paste, remove all the screws that you see. One screw over the PCA chip and the rest of the screws over the heat sinks. These screws have a spring and they have a little C-lock on them that will prevent the screw coming out entirely. One of the screws has a little warranty label right on top. There's a warranty label. If you do not want to remove this warranty label, damage it, just put an alcohol right on top of this thing and just peel it up with an alcohol without damaging it. There's a trick for everything. You can use a spatula to pull it up. There we go, so I'm gonna put this right over here so I can reuse it again so we're gonna remove that screw too all right so we loosen up this screw too now we can gently go ahead and lift up the heat sink bring it up slowly be careful because one of them uses a liquid metal just bring it down underneath and go like this and there we have it. So we can see that the CPU is using a liquid metal and the GPU is using a 
thermal paste, which is a thermal pad paste type. I'll leave the link on the description if you want to purchase the original one that they put in here. The liquid metal, you don't need to replace it. You can just smudge it again back in the center. You can see the center. It is kind of dried out in there. There's nothing left in there. It's you know, it, Everything is pushed to one side. So what you can do, you can grab a Q-tip. One Q-tip, oops. One Q-tip, not two. And what you want to do, you want to just smoosh it right over to the center, bring it to the center, put it right there. And grab it from there. As long as you move it a little bit towards the front. Everything is being pushed out to the side. There we go. Once you put a little bit of the drops in the middle, it's going to spread again easily. Right? So down here, we can see the thermal paste in there. These are thermal putty. You don't need to replace your thermal putties, but if you do want to replace thermal putties, you can just add thermal putties over. They get squished all over the place, and they are not conductive, so it's good to have a thermal putty on the board. It's not bad. So to clean up the low thermal paste, grab a little bit of workshop towel. Spread it with an alcohol nicely, fair amount. And then what you want to do, you want to swipe over this crystal die. Like that. And you want to flip it inside out. And you want to clean up this heat sink. All right, once you clean up the heat sink, use a dry part to do a second swipe. Once you're done, you can grab your favorite thermal paste. And in this case, I'm going to use extreme. Just a little bit. You don't need to put too much. A little bit goes way along. There we go. And then you want to just clean the wipe it out. Again, the thermal parties, we don't replace them until like a six, seven years down the road. So the thermal parties don't get affected that much. So, but if you do want to replace them with a good thermal party, I will leave the link in the video description. You can go ahead and replace them. And the thermal pad on a PCS chip is a 0.5 millimeter thermal pad. All right. Now, once you're done with this, you want to flip the heat sink away from the computer first. And then you want to bring it up straight because you want to drip that thermal, that uh, liquid metal over. And then you want to bring it down gently. Don't be too rough with it. Bring it down and set it down where it's supposed to sit, right there. Once it's down, now you're gonna stop putting the screw. There's a number one, two, three, four. As long as you cross screw them, you're fine. You don't have to go with the numbers, but make sure you cross screw them always. All right, so there's that order. And this one here, that one, grab the tiny flathead screw. And this is for the PCS chip. All right, we're gonna grab this warranty label and we are gonna put it over this screw. We're gonna grab the fan, put the fan right in here. Grab the jack, make sure the jack is sitting right in front of it. You just stick it right into the connector. Grab the other one, put it right there. Slide in the connect jack inside the connector. There we go. Again, if you want to hold it there, you want to be like a really fussy about it, put the gaffer tape on top like that. 
grab the flex cable for the LCD, bring it down in 45 degree angle inside the connector, and then lock it down. Put the gaffer tapes over this. There we go. Put the four screws for the screws, two on each, and two four screws on the fan, two on each fan. I will power it on at the end of the video so you guys can see it. All right, once you have that one in, make sure everything is in place nicely. Grab the battery that you removed, align the jack first in front of the connector, and push it in evenly. Always push it in evenly. Grab the gaffer tapes, put it on. Make sure it's really stuck to it. I forgot the other gaffer tape for the other fan. Again, not my favorite, but I'll put it on. All right, once we have that one in place, grab the bottom cover that you cleaned. Make sure everything is, nothing is in offset, everything is in place. Fan rolling. And put it right over. Push down the front, push down the back. Make sure you hear those click sounds. If you see any gap opening, just pinch them and it will click to its place. To finish it off, it's just to put the bottom screws all over the place. And that should cover up today's video. Again, I hope you, this video helped you guys to do your own service for you, Acer Predator Halos Neo 16 model. As always, I hope you guys like this video. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm going to finish it up, putting up the screws, and I'm going to power on the laptop so you guys can see that it powers on. The light is on. And we should hear the logo and the jet. There we go. All right, and that covers up today's video.